Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our informational webinar for this summer's congressional reception in Washington, D.C. on July 25th. A few housekeeping items, or one important housekeeping item, you will notice when you have your GoToWebinar control panel pulled up that towards the middle or bottom of the screen, there is a box for questions. So you can type in a question and we will be moderating those questions. And I think what we'll do, since we may have some of um, the same questions pop up more than once, you will wait to the end of this webinar and then we will answer all questions. But if any time while I'm talking, you have you know, any questions, please um, just type them in and we will make a note. This is Kate Kelly. I work for Monarch Housing Associates and together with um, my colleagues here, we've been working to plan with our partners across the state the congressional reception. The goal of this webinar is to go over the main goals of the webinar and logistics, and then of course, as we said earlier, answer any um, questions you might have about the event. So I wanna start off first, you know, thanking all of you in addition to being on the webinar to planning to be with us on July 25th. We know it's a long day of travel down and back to Washington, D.C. We know many of you have volunteered to be impact speakers or are speaking yourself. Some of you are going to be captaining buses. And the success of this event will not happen without all of you. So we really want to thank you for all that you're doing to help make this a great event. The event is getting closer and closer. It'll be taking place a week from Wednesday. The timing of the event is from 12 to 4 p.m. And for those of you coming down on buses, the goal is that the buses will arrive by 1130 with plenty of time for you to get over to the Dirks and Senate Auditorium. You can see on the slide that we have up the link to um, get more information on Monarch's website about the congressional reception and really anything you might want to know about the event is available there. You'll notice also on the slide that we are reminding you of our hashtags for the event. We'll talk about that, those more at the end of the webinar. We talk about social media, but please feel free to use these um, as um, we get closer to the event and on the day of the event. Our goals for the day, our first goal is to share with our elected officials in Washington the message that we are fighting cuts to housing and that any cuts to federal housing funding are not acceptable. So we've been using the hashtag, no housing cuts. We also want to remind our elected officials that opportunity starts at home. I think that's an important, very important message for them to hear because without a home, it's very hard in life to, to do anything else or to, to take advantage of your own opportunity or opportunity for your family. We want the show, to show the members of New Jersey's congressional delegation how much we all care about this issue. We want to bridge the gap between policymakers, our elected officials in Washington, their staff who work on housing issues who will most likely be joining them, and those of you and those of us traveling down to Washington that day who are affected by the policy. We expect, similar to last year, we'll have 350 people or over 350 people in attendance with the majority of those except for a few exceptions from our, some of our partners in Washington will be constituents from New Jersey. And that's just a powerful image and presence to have in front of our elected officials that that many um, of you all are taking the time out of your day or taking a whole day to travel down to Washington and, and show them the elected officials just how important it is to you to fight cuts to housing and how opportunity starts at home. As you may know, similar to last year, we will have a program of speakers at the event, and the speakers really are the highlights of the event. So we will have one speaker from each of New Jersey's 12 congressional districts sharing a story about how they've been impacted by homelessness. You may have seen on our Monarch website, on our, through our social media accounts, that we have already been starting to profile some of the impact speakers and share their stories. And the goal with the impact speakers is for the elected officials, our U.S. senators and our U.S. representatives to hear from their constituents about the impact of homelessness and really bring home to them the message of the reasons why our message is around no 
cuts to housing and opportunity starts at home are so important. For the elected officials who will be at the event, we will also have the opportunity to hear from them. The elected officials will have an opportunity to share their own remarks in addition to hearing from the impact speakers. And our hope is, and it has how it has worked in the past, is that they will share with us you know, how they are prioritizing working to end homelessness and create affordable housing in New Jersey. There will be very small number of speakers, most likely two from national organizations who will be briefly sharing the national perspective, someone from the Opportunity Starts at Home campaign and from the National Alliance and Homelessness, just sharing the perspective of why you being in Washington and your advocacy is so important. Last year, we were very pleased we had almost every member of Congress attend, including both of New Jersey's US senators and 12 of the 14 members of the House of Representatives. We've gotten a very favorable response from the elected officials. And of course, barring any unforeseen events that or votes that come up on their calendars, to date, we are expecting to definitely have at the event Senator Booker and Representatives Pascrell, Lance, Ceres, Lobiondo, and Norcross. And our goal is that as we go get closer to the event next Wednesday, that they all will have committed to being there. Um, as I said, it looks very hopeful and positive that we'll have most of um, New Jersey's members of Congress attend the event. You know, we hear time and again when elected officials come to the event how wonderful it is for them to see so many of their constituents who care about these issues in one place and what an impact it has on both them and also on their staffers who work on housing issues. So your presence really makes a difference at the congressional reception. For the majority of you, you'll be traveling down to Washington by bus that day. There are six buses making 10 stops along the way. And we're asking that everyone be at the bus 30 minutes before the pickup time. You will receive direct communication from us with a reminder about what time your bus is leaving and what time you need to be there to get on your bus. But just as a quick review, um, buses are leaving from Newark, Freehold, Peter Peterborough, Cranford, Trenton, Westville, Madison, Edison, Galway, and Vineland. And again, you'll be getting any logistics you need to know about your bus departures um, from us directly prior to the event. Just a little more information about the buses. There are restrooms on the buses. Each bus has a restroom. Our goal is you know, barring any unforeseen traffic issues to make one stop on the way down, one stop on the way back. Um, you know, the stop on the way back will be so folks can get a bite to eat for dinner because, you know, we'll be leaving the event finishes at four, hopefully being on the buses ready to go by 4.30, um, you know, allowing everybody plenty of time to get back to the um, bus departure sites and then getting on, our, on the way back to New Jersey. New this year, especially given the very important um, elections, midterm elections in November, when every member of um, the New Jersey House of Representatives delegation will be up for office, we are offering the opportunity for people to register to vote while on the buses. <clears throat> Bus captains who will be helping you and giving you updates on the way down and on the way back will have materials to register you if you are not already registered to vote. And they'll have the registration forms, clipboards, pens, anything you might need. You, many of you are probably already registered to vote. Some of you may have your reasons for not registering to vote, but for those of you who are not and would like to vote, this is a great opportunity. And one of our hopes with registering people to vote is that when the elected officials are introduced by Richard Brown from our office, and when other speakers get up that we can remind the elected officials that not only do they have constituents from their district in the audience, but they have constituents who are registered to vote in the audience. Those forms will be collected. Monarch will take care of getting them to the um, proper election officials. And then once we get into the fall, when the election gets closer, we'll be in touch with just reminders on when to vote, where to vote, and all of those things. There will be snacks and drinks provided on the bus 
on the way down. Um, it certainly is not meant to be a snack that would um, substitute for a full breakfast, but if you need, if you think you're going to need a little snack on the way down, there will be something provided. Again, time permitting, there may be a stop when you could get off and get whatever else, you know, very quickly besides going to the bathroom you might need. As we said before, there is, will be a captain on, um, on each bus. And the captains are really going to be your kind of go-to people to answer any questions you have once you get on the bus. They've been briefed with a lot more detail than we're giving on this webinar to help make everything go as smoothly as possible for all of us. A question that we get every year, which is a very important one, is um, folks wonder what they should wear to the event. And our key message is that, you know, we should all be dressing comfortably because when you get to, you'll be sitting on the bus and then when you get to Washington, there is a walk from the Peace Circle where everyone's dropped off over to the Dirksen Senate Auditorium. So you should wear comfortable shoes, clothes that are comfortable, you know, with the anticipation that it may be a typical hot summer day in Washington, D.C. So it will be hot, there will be some walking, so you should wear something that you'd be comfortable meeting your elected official in, but at the same time, um, you know, that is comfortable um, for you that day. We have a map here on our slide that shows the most direct route to get from where the buses will be dropped off to the Dirksen Senate Auditorium. There are, through the Capitol Visitor Center, golf carts available for those in need of assistance. Even with the golf carts, there is some minimal walking because they can't get right up to the door to the Dirksen um, Senate Auditorium. So we ask through the registration process that anyone who has any disability or special needs that may make it hard to do any walking is in touch with us. And we are going to sort of, the best we can, prioritize anyone who needs assistance, we will do our best to make sure that they are on a golf cart. It's approximately half a mile walk. But again, it, there, it could be very warm, so that's why we're asking people to dress comfortably, wear comfortable shoes, and as much notice as we can get ahead of time from any of you about who would need a golf cart ride will just help us make sure that that whole piece moves as smoothly as possible. Once you get to the Dirksen Center Auditorium, our goal is that people would be arriving 11.30, 11.45 with a little time to get settled and get your seats before the event starts at noon. In the atrium outside of the um, auditorium, we will have box lunches available. So lunch, that's something, a meal you don't have to worry about. Lunch and a drink will be provided at the event. New this year, we have an app that we hope that if you haven't already done so, you will download on your phone. The beauty of the app is that it's going to have any, really any information that you may need the day before, the day of the event, available in one spot. For example, the map that we just um, showed, showed you all um, will be on the app. It's a way for you to communicate with other attendees and it's a way for you to get the hashtags, if you can't remember them, to use social media. So um, we just, it's really important that, you know, if you have a smartphone that you take a few minutes and download the app and have it ready to go. Because the more people that use it, the more effective it will be. And I, we think it will be a really good tool for us all to have the day of the event. I do want to back up just a little bit. I meant to talk about this earlier when I was talking about the speakers. In addition to the impact speaker from each district, and in some cases we may have time for a second impact speaker in you know, some districts, and the elected officials, we know that you know, many, if not all of you, have a story to share about the impact of homelessness, whether it's a personal story um, about from your own life, whether it's you work for an agency that you know, serves individuals who have stories and you want to share what, you know, you've seen secondhand about the impact of homelessness. We want to, for the, you know, there'll be so many of us at the event, but we only have room for, as I said, you know, the one or two impact speakers for each district. We will have folks with um, the capacity to do short videos, most likely through an iPhone and a microphone, 
in the atrium outside of the event. And our goal is to get people to talk for two, three, four minutes, either telling their story or if they'd like to be interviewed instead, responding to a brief set of questions um, about why they're in Washington, why this is so important to them. So it would be a big help to us if you could think about if that's something you would wanna do, if there are folks from your agency that would wanna be videotaped, if you can let us know ahead of time. The folks that we have from Monarch and from other agencies that are um, will be doing the videos, we can just give them um, a heads up, you know, that you'd like to be inter interview interviewed or videotaped. There's also, you know, with today's technology, the possibility and the option that if you have a story you want to share before we go to Washington, that you could record a short video and get that to us before the event, and we can use that as a way to promote um, ahead of the event. I know there's some agencies that do a lot of the videotaping, um, and so we have that option. And for those of you who at the event are going to share your stories, we will have release forms available that you can sign that gives us permission to use the videos, whether we're sharing them with elected officials, through social media, with the press, wherever we may um, be sharing those. And that leads, the, the, this, my brief discussion about videos leads us to our piece about social media. We know all, you know, many if not all of you are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you know, leading up to the event, a few days before, the day before, the day of the event, especially when you're um, boarding the buses, it'd be really helpful if you could help us promote the event through social media. So the best way to do that is to use the hashtags No Housing Cuts and, and Jay Hill Day. And I can just give an example, you know, if there are a few of you meeting to get on the bus in Trenton, you can snap a group picture in front of the bus. You can tag your elected official, for example, Bonnie Watson Coleman, um, Bob Menezes, Cory Booker, tag them and say, we're coming, you know, we're on our way down. Um, we can't wait to see you in Washington and, and, you know, remind you how critical it is that there are no housing cuts and that opportunity starts at home. As you all know, social media is really a great way to do our own press work and PR about the event. So any pictures you can take and post with our hashtags are very helpful. We will have some you know, minimal signage available or simple signage available at the event. So as you're getting ready to enter the event, if a group of you take a little break during the event, you can take a small group picture with a congressional reception sign, post it on your social media, use the hashtags, and that will help us just promote everything that we're doing. I believe when you go to the congressional reception page on Monarch's website, there is a link um, to a resource for social media that has all the handles for the for Twitter and Facebook for the elected officials. But if anyone who's on this call has trouble finding that and wants us to share that, um, we can get that to you so that you can help us um, you know, we can all use social media as, effect as effectively as we can. I'm going to leave this up while we take any questions from the audience because I think it's, you know, making sure everyone has a chance to make sure they know what the Twitter handles are and as a reminder about our social media. And I know we have one question and I'm and I'm about, I'm going to turn the phone over to Kara Foley, one of our two summer interns who many of you may have been in contact with about the event and Kara's going to um, facilitate our Q&A now and answer any questions you might have. Hi everyone, this is Kara. Uh, it seems that we only have one question right now, but as a reminder in the drop down menu, there is an option for questions. So if you do have any questions, you can just type down there and then um, I could answer it. So the one question we have right now is, I'm not taking the bus, what time should I arrive at the Senate office building? So we will not have access to um, the room until 11.30 because that is when the lunch is being served. So just arrive at 11.30 because you will not be able to get in any time before that. And the event itself will be starting at 12.
All right, it seems that, oh, there is one more question. Let me take a quick look. All right, this question is, do you have a suggested parking location for those driving individually? Um, I'm gonna hand this question over to Kate. That is a very good question. I personally haven't had to look for parking near the um, location of the event, but I will check with others and we will get back to you. I'm sure that there are, you know, paid lots available. There may be some rare um, street parking available. I just don't know what the meter regulations are down in Washington. So we will maybe sort of crowdsource with people we know who've driven to the event in the past, and we can um, get back to you. I get back to the individual who asked us the question, um, and we will, um, you know get back to you in the next few days with suggestions about that. Okay, our next question is, if we have questions the day of, before we reach the bus, who can we contact? I believe the best person for you to be in touch with that morning will be your bus captain. And I believe that you will be receiving information as it gets closer, probably early next week who your bus captain is, but you will have their contact information and that would be the person that you would be in touch with that day because they would know all the details and logistics about your bus. These are really great questions and we appreciate everyone who's asking them because we certainly want to make sure that we're addressing everything we may not have thought of when we put this webinar together. One last call for questions before we close out the webinar. I'm going to just pull up um, our page with, these are, you know, if you have questions leading up to the event, so through next Tuesday, you can reach out to myself, Richard Brown, Kara Foley, Chris Canales, anyone in our office who's working on the congressional reception can answer your question. Our emails and our extensions are there. But as we said, the day of the event, if you're taking a bus, you'd be able to reach the bus captain. And then once you get to the event, um, we will be on hand at the event to um, answer any questions um, you might have. Someone had another very good question. I will pass this over to Kara. Hi again. Um, this question is, uh, can I bring a change of clothes to the bus ride? So that is definitely okay. Um, just like any other bus, there is um, an overhead compartment, I believe, for any bags that you may have. So if you, you know, would be more comfortable riding other clothes and changing once you get to the event, um, there is definitely, you know, restroom facilities for you to change if you'd be uh, more comfortable that way. So definitely. Although we just remind you that it's not necessary to dress um, extremely nice. You know, whatever you feel comfortable in, there's no real dress code. Um, we also just want to remind uh, everyone that this webinar will also be posted uh, a link to it. The recording of it will be posted on our website as well. We have another good question. Can you bring a small book bag into the event? To the best of my recollection, yes, you can if it's considered a personal item. It has to be small and we can actually maybe double check on what the, um, the requirements are for that. For those of you who haven't visited a Senate or House office building on the Hill or haven't, has, haven't visited a building recently, there is now security to enter. I mean, it's not a new thing, but there is security to enter the building similar to what you would um, go through if you were going you know, through an airport or through a courthouse. So they will, um, you will walk through and be scanned through a metal detector and anything that you carry in, whether it's, you know, you know, a small personal item, it has to fit through if you can envision a smaller, like, conveyor bag check. It, you know, obviously you can't bring any kind of, any, any personal oversized bag that would be considered luggage. But yes, you can bring 
um, a small bag and we certainly see people um, do that. It could be a bag or it could be a purse. Um, and then the next, I'm gonna hand this question over to Kara. Hi again, um, I'm, this question is, is there Wi-Fi on the bus and a charging port? Um, I know that there is not any charging ports available um, just due to power issues. Um, so unfortunately, no. Um, concerning the Wi-Fi, there is Wi-Fi on the bus. So that um, information will be provided at the beginning of the ride. And just to piggyback on the Wi-Fi, I would just keep in mind that probably like with any more public Wi-Fi situation, the more people that are using it, it, it may not be as fast as that what you're used to having at home. So, um, you know, there certainly will be Wi-Fi and the bus captains will be able to give you that information, but we just ask for people to be um, um, patient and flexible. Another question that we're getting is individuals ask for our shirt size and if we'll be getting shirts. I think, I don't think that that question was asked by Monarch. It may be with an agency you are affiliated with. I believe that some agencies are providing shirts. That is not something we're providing. We plan to have lanyard name tags at the event, which everyone will be getting. Um, which will help us all identify, identify each other, get to know each other, and then can also be a souvenir um, from the event. But we are not, Monarch is not planning to provide shirts. So that may be something that you just want to follow up with, with the agency that you're working with on attending the event. One last call for questions before we close out. We, we certainly have all been very helpful. We don't want to brush, brush anyone off if there are other questions. Okay, well, thank you again, everyone. You know, we know that everyone is busy and that you took time out to be on this webinar and in addition to taking the time to be with us in Washington next week. So we greatly appreciate it. Uh, certainly any questions you have between now and next Tuesday, be in touch with one of us. And then as we said, the day of the event that morning, you'll have the contact information for your bus captains who are gonna be a wealth of knowledge and a great resource and then we're all really looking forward to meeting and seeing all of you in Washington, and we will be on hand at the event to help you with anything you need while we're there. So just you know, a few reminders, if you get back to us, if you're interested in helping with short videos, telling um, the stories before the event or at the event, please don't forget to use our social media hashtags and to post on social media and um, dress comfortably and um, you know, be ready to join us for a great day in Washington. Thanks to, and because of all of you, we're gonna have a great impact once again this year. And, you know, we really couldn't be doing this with all, all of you. So we appreciate um, your um, involvement and enthusiasm. Bye.